Hi everyone, welcome back. So today, I want to show you how to use the Boolean operation as well as some tricks to help you visualize it in action. Let's get started. Go up to your shelf and add a cube into the scene. And with the Boolean operation, we need a couple objects to make it work. So I'm going to select this cube. I'm going to make a duplicate of it. So press Ctrl D and let's move the second cube over here. Next, open up your outliner and we're going to scale up cube number one. That should be enough right there. And now select your second cube and move it so that it's overlapping with the first cube. There we go. And it doesn't really matter where, just so that it's um, close and overlapping. And now um, let's take a look at these Boolean operations. So up here where your mesh tab is, click on that. And then down here we have something called Booleans and it has three operations. It has union, difference, and intersection. So let's take a look at um, what these are. So with union, what it's going to do is it's going to take these two meshes and merge it so that it becomes one singular mesh and also it'll delete that interior geometry, so that intersecting geometry. Um, with the union operation though, one of the things I like to do is I like to turn on x-ray mode first and the reason for that is um, sometimes you'll perform a union operation and you think it worked but it didn't and you don't find out till later. So with the x-ray mode on, which is this button right here, it allows us to see through the mesh and we can see whether that interior geometry gets deleted or not. All right, so let's try it out. Um, first, select cube number one, and you'll want to select it in this order because it matters for the next operation that we're going to do. Then hold down control and select cube number two. Next, go up to your mesh tab again, go to Booleans, and then choose Union. And pay attention to that mesh. And just like that, it's deleted that overlapping geometry, and now we have one mesh here. Um, we can exit x-ray mode now and now we have a new shape awesome uh, we can change the operation from over here um, right beside operation or if you want you can go to your channel box right uh, find your poly pool input or also you can go to the attribute editor and you can access um, this operation from over here as well but i'm going to use this window right so click on union and then change it to difference so with the difference operation what it's going to do is it's going to take your second mesh and cut it out of the first one. So basically subtract it from the first one. And that's why the order of the selection will matter for when you're performing this operation. And now we have a new look here. It looks like we extruded it in, but really we performed a Boolean difference operation. And then finally with the last operation, it's called intersection, right? And what intersection is going to do is um, where the two meshes overlap, where this, um, sort of like this hole is, right? It'll keep that part of the geometry and make it its own mesh. So now let's change it from difference to intersection. And there you go. You can see that it's kept only that part. Cool. Now let's change it back to difference. And we'll pretend that um, we wanted to uh, perform a difference operation, but let's say that we weren't happy with the placement of this. Well, lucky for us, we still have the transforms here on the left in the outliner, right? If I select cube number one and go into my move tool, that's the transform for that. And if I select cube number two, that's the transform for the smaller cube. So if we want, we can still move this, right? We can scale it, or if we want, we can also rotate it. I'm just gonna undo that. So that's really awesome for just correcting the position of your Boolean operation. But what if um, the object was a little more complex, something more complex than a cube? Um, and you want it to visualize that better. Well, I'm going to show you a trick to do that as well. Um, let's delete the two transforms and the cube object. And now let's start over. So we're going to add a cube back into the scene again. I'm going to make a duplicate just like before. And then let's scale up cube number one. There we go. And then we'll take uh, cube number two and move it into position just like before. There we go. And um, the, we're back to kind of where we started before, right? Now let's take cube number two and let's make a duplicate of it, of it as well. So control D to duplicate it. So we have cube two and three, which are sitting on top of each other. And let's group these. So select cube two, hold down control, select cube three, and then press control G to group it. And if I expand this group, you can see that I have cube two and cube three. Let's put cube three onto its own layer. So open up your channel box down here. Choose this last icon, that'll add it to its own layer. 
and then click this last box and make it a template. And you can see that we can see the outline of it. It's a little bit, um, I guess, pinkish, right? Um, a template means that we can kind of see through it like a wireframe, but we can't select it. Now, right now, it's a little bit hard to see because cube two is on top of it. So you'll just have to take my word for it. But we're about to perform our Boolean operation. So let's select cubed one or cube one. Uh, hold down control, select cube two, and then go to mesh Booleans. And this time, let's choose difference. And now you can see what's happened, right? It's performed the difference operation where it's cut out of the larger cube, but we can see the template of cube three. Now, if I go to group one, which is um, the smaller cube, I'm just gonna minimize that or sort of collapse that group so we don't accidentally select the child objects, right? We can now move this and we have a visual of what this looks like, right? Um, also, we can center the pivot so it's a little bit easier to uh, move. Right. So here's our pivot. We have the we're moving the, the group, not the child objects. And we can scale this. We can scale it in one uh, direction if we want. And we can also rotate it. It allows us to see that much easier. So if your object is like it could be anything, but maybe some type of tool or something more complex. Now you'll be able to see it. So yeah, so try this out. Um, this is great for just visualizing it. Uh, something to note though, a couple things. Uh, Boolean operations can leave um, quite a few n-gons, so it's up to you whether you want to um, clean that up for the type of modeling you're doing, right? And also, um, there are much better tools and plugins to visualize Booleans, but sometimes you want to just do this because it's quick, or maybe you're working for a company that makes it a little more difficult. Maybe you need to get permission to install plugins. And this is one way around it to visualize your Boolean operation. So yeah, try this out and uh, play around. Booleans are very powerful and you should be able to uh, improve your modeling um, by just mixing it in with the regular modeling tools you have.